a very good morning students today we are going to discuss about temperature distribution in solids and in laminar flow we are discussing chapter 10 unit 4 which includes the heat transport where today we are going to discuss about the heat conduction in a cooling film so as you know the fins are generally used to enhance the mass transfer these fins are used to increase the heat transfer area between a metal wall and the fluids which gases having a low thermal conductivity so the gases which having a low thermal conductivity if it comes in contact with a metal surface the heat transfer area must be increased because the thermal conductivity is less so simple rectangular fin is shown in the figure so you have seen a fin this is nothing but the surface and this is nothing but the rectangular fin so today we are going to find out how the heat conduction takes place through this fin so we are going to consider the same figure for heat transfer the wall temperature is tw the ambient air temperature is ta the fin length is l thickness is 2b and the width is w what we are going to assume is the heat losses from the end edges of the fin are negligible then we can apply the thermal energy balance over element of delta z so the shaded portion shows a delta z so we are going to apply the this thermal energy balance only on the element delta z so what will be the terms which will comes into the balance will be the rate of thermal energy in rate of thermal energy in by conduction and rate of thermal energy out by conduction so first of all we'll discuss these two terms and then we'll go for the convection so a rate of thermal energy in by conduction will be nothing but you can see it is qz qz at z so this is heat flux so you have to multiply by area what will be the area through which you have to consider thermal energy in by conduction so obviously it will be 2b thickness is it right into w so 2b into width w will be nothing but the area into heat transfer what will be the thermal energy out by conduction it will be again qz at z plus delta z obviously into 2bw so this will be the two terms for thermal energy by conduction one more term that you have to consider here in thermal energy balance is rate of thermal energy out by convection so convection means h delta t so see here it is h and delta t is t minus ta what is the area area you want to consider for convection will be the same shaded portion area above and below so it will be 2w is it right into delta z that will be area into h delta t so h a delta t will be the rate of thermal energy out by convection now you can combine all these terms as a thermal energy balance to be w q z at z minus 2 b w q z at z plus delta z minus h into 2 w delta z t minus t a so this is a diagram where x y and z coordinates are shown heat transfer in and out by conduction is shown the thickness of the element is delta z l is the length of the fin w is the width and 2b is the thickness now if you get this first thermal energy balance what will be the next step you have to divide this equation by 2b w into delta z if you divide it by you will get equation of limit delta z tends to zero qz at z plus delta z minus qz upon delta z 
इज इक्वल टू माइनस एच बाई बी इन टू टी माइनस टी ए सो यू कैन राइट द अबाउ इक्वेशन ऑफ लिमिट डेल्टा जेड टेंस टू जीरो एज इट इज अ डिफिनेशन ऑफ फर्स्ट डेरिवेटिव ऑफ क्यू जेड सो इट इज अ डी बाई डी जेड ऑफ क्यू जेड इज इक्वल टू माइनस एच बाई कैपिटल बी टी माइनस टी ए एच इज अ हीट ट्रांसफर को इफिशेंट क्यू जेड इज अट ट्रांसफर हीट ट्रांसफर पर यूनिटी एरिया बी इज नथिंग बट द थिकनेस टी इज अ टेम्परेचर एट एनी पॉइंट एंड टी ए इज अ नथिंग बट अ टेम्परेचर एट ऑफ एयर नाउ यू कैन राइट द फूरियस लॉ ऑफ हीट कंडक्शन इज क्यू जेड इज इक्वल टू माइनस के इन टू डी टी बाय डी जेड कैन यू राइट दिस इन अब इक्वेशन येस सो वॉट द इक्वेशन बिकम्स इज माइनस के डी स्क्वेर टी बाय डी जेड स्क्वेर इज इक्वल टू एच बाय बी माइनस टी माइनस टी ए सो यू कैन राइट डी टी स्क्वेर डी स्क्वेर टी बाय डी जेड स्क्वेर इज एच बाय के बी इन टू टी माइनस टी ए नाउ हियर वी आर इंट्रोड्यूसिंग द बाउंड्री कंडीशन एंड टू डायमेंशन लेस नंबर्स सो द फर्स्ट बाउंड्री कंडीशन इज एट जेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो जेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो मीन्स ऑल सर्फेस टेम्परेचर विल बी टी डब्ल्यू द सेकेंड बाउंड्री कंडीशन जेड इज इक्वल टू एल मीन्स इट इज नथिंग बट द डिस कॉर्नर जेड इज इक्वल टू एल वॉट यू कैन राइट इज यू कैन राइट डी टी बाय डी जेड इज इक्वल टू जीरो वॉट इट मीन इट मीन्स टेम्परेचर रिमेन कॉन्स्टंट सो दैट इज मीन वी आर अगेन इंट्रोड्यूसिंग द टू डायमेंशन लेस थ्री डायमेंशन लेस क्वान्टिटी हियर इट इज अ समॉट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड डेरिवेशन सो लिसन केयरफुली थीटा इज रेशो डायमेंशन लेस टेम्परेचर रेशो सो इट इज अ टी माइनस टी ए अपॉन टी डब्ल्यू माइनस टी ए सो टी डब्ल्यू इज अ वॉल टेम्परेचर टी इज एनी टेम्परेचर एंड टी ए इज नथिंग बट द टेम्परेचर ऑफ एयर The second dimensionless quantity is dimensionless distance. Why it is a dimensional? Because there is no unit. Zeta is equal to z by l. Z is a small, l is a total length. So z by l will be dimensionless distance. The third will be called as a dimensionless heat transfer coefficient n square. N square is equal to h l square by k b. So n square is h l so it means obviously heat transfer coefficient term is there thermal conductivity is there so from above equation okay so from this dimensionless temperature you can write t is equal to theta t w minus t a plus t a okay then equation can be written in terms of theta and zeta so above equation we can written we can write d square t by d z square can be write as d square theta by upon l square into d zeta square t w minus t a is equal to h by k b into t minus t a so this is how you can convert the above equations into the dimensionless quantity then what is the d square theta by d zeta square is you can take l square this side h l square by kb into t minus ta upon tw minus ta so this t minus ta tw minus ta can be written as theta is it right h l square by kb see here it is n square so the right hand side become n square into theta is equal to d square theta by d zeta square so you can solve this equation and by solving this equation you know that you will get this equation as theta is equal to c1 e raised to n zeta plus c2 into e raised to minus n zeta so now applying the first boundary condition first boundary condition is got at z is equal to 0 tw is equal to ta what is mean by theta is equal to theta is equal to 1 why because t w t is t w is it right so theta is equal to 1 okay so you can put c1 plus c2 is equal to 1 second boundary condition you can write that z is equal to l 
dt by dz is equal to 0. So what will be zeta? Zeta is z by L is equal to 1. The theta by dz is 0. Then by taking the first in de derivative of d theta by dz is equal to n into c1 e raised to n minus n into c2 into e raised to minus n. So equation 10.109. So this equation can be write like this. Okay. Is equal to this. If we take the first differential d theta by dz is equal to 0 as per the above conditions. So the differentiation becomes n c1 e raised to n minus n c into e raised to y. Solve this you will get c2 is equal to c1 e raised to n minus e raised to minus n. Again put this equation in c1 plus c2 is equal to 1 and solve this you will get the c1 value c1 is equal to e raised to minus n upon e raised to minus n plus e raised to n. So this will be c2 and this will be c1. You can put c1 and c2 in theta and you can rearrange the terms. What do you get? Theta is equal to e raised to n zeta minus 1 plus minus n e raised to minus n zeta minus 1 whole bracket upon 0 upon e raised to n plus e raised to minus n upon 2. <coughs> if you remember, <coughs> what is this? This will be a cos hyperbolic term. It is a cos hyperbolic of n zeta minus 1. The denominator is cos hyperbolic n. So this is how it gives a temperature distribution in a rectangular fin. It is a theta. Now what you want to find out is eta. What will be nothing but the effectiveness of the fin. So eta is called as the effectiveness of the fin and it is find out by the ratio of actual rate of heat loss from the fin. What is actual heat loss is occurring from the fin to the rate of heat loss from the isothermal fin. Means if the temperature of that fin remain constant, what will be the heat loss? That ratio is called as a effectiveness. Eta is equal to theta by theta max. So you can write again in terms of the double integration. Eta is equal to 0 to W0 to L integration. H into T minus T upon into DZ minus DZ into DY upon integration 0 to W integration 0 to L H into T W minus T DZ to DY. So again you can put value of theta here as T minus T upon T W minus T A you will get this equation cos hyperbolic N 1 minus zeta upon cos hyperbolic N you will get this equation is cos hyperbolic n bracket minus 1 by n sin hyperbolic n into 1 minus zeta vary from 0 to 1. So put this condition and you will get eta is equal to tan hyperbolic of n upon n. What is n? n is equal to hl square by kb. So it is a dimensionless transfer question you can write hl square by kb. This is how you can find out the effectiveness of the fin. N is a dimensionless quantity defined by the equation. So we will discuss about the problem related to the rectangular fin and then we'll discuss go for the more problems problem 10.2 calculate the heat loss from the rectangular fin for the following condition air temperature given 176.6 degrees celsius all temperature is 260 thermal conductivity of fin is given thermal conductivity of air heat transfer coefficient length width and thickness all the values are provided to you what you have to find out what will be the heat loss so you have to find out the thermal efficiency eta is given by eta is equal to tan hyperbolic n by n 
you know what is n n is h l square by k b so tan hyperbolic of h l square by k b bracket square one half upon h l square by k b raised to one half so all values are provided to you heat transfer coefficient value length thermal conductivity and breadth all values are provided to you you can find out what will be the eta is equal to 0.288 so this will be nothing but the effectiveness of the film and heat loss through the rectangular fin is given by h a delta t so h into delta t is t w minus t naught now you have to take a total temperature difference you have to multiply it by eta because it is the effectiveness and h a delta t a will be 2w into l not now delta z it will be 2b into l so you can find out q by 2w into l into h t w minus t naught into eta you put all the values you will get what will be the heat transfer rate in btu per hour next once you find out what is the thing but the heat transfer area you can go for problem 10.3 and oil which is acting like a lubricant between the cylindrical surfaces so one surface is moving another surface is moving okay outer surface radius inner surface radius is given temperature is given what you have to find out is what is nothing but the value of temperature maximum temperature in coaxial cylinders so all value of viscosity density and thermal conductivity is given what you can find out is omega omega is equal to 7908 into 2 pi by 60 you will get it in radians per seconds you can find out b mu density rho thermal conductivity and you can put all these values in this equation this equation will be t minus t not is equal to one half mu v not square by k x by b bracket one minus x by b plus x by b so all these values are nothing but in form of x by b where x by b is given as a one half and v not is equal to written ohm into r so putting all the value of radian frequency x and b is it one and half okay you can find out the t max so similarly the t max will be 79.3 it is 174.74 this is how you can find out nothing but the temperature maximum temperature through the coaxial cylinders now the final will discuss about this problem and we'll stop it here consider a stainless steel pipe what you have to find out having a diameter of 5 mm and length is 3 meter long as current passing through the wire is 300 ampere and having a resistance of 0.125 ohm the outer surface temperature is 450 kelvin the thermal conductivity is 20.5 watt per meter kelvin estimate the maximum temperature rise through the wire so what is given r is given thermal conductivity is given tw is 450 degree length is 3 meters r is 2.5 millimeters and current density is 300 ampere now the heat produced per unit volume if you want to find out okay it will be nothing but the se sc into volume sc because unit is watt per meter centimeter cube into volume so it will give you the power power is what it is in terms of in resistance and current density is i square by r is equal to sc into volume what will be the volume will be a pi r square is it right into the length l so from this you can find out value of the rate of heat production per unit volume watt per centimeter cube once you find out you can use a simple equation that we studied is t max minus t w is equal to se into r square by 4k
you can again find out the maximum temperature so this is how you can study all the topics from the 10 chapters and you can do the exercise so solve many problems related to the electric heat source viscous heat source and the heat conduction through the cooling film okay these are the three important derivations and the problems generally asked in a examination okay one more lecture will conduct on the heat transfer and then we will start the mass transfer operation thank you guys